is and helps with the old algorithm in a huge way. And if you're looking for something to do, use the comments to tell us where in the world you're watching the show from right now. That would be absolutely amazing. It's going to be a boss show. Um, strap yourself in. You've still got a minute and 30-ish second, 32. 32. Go, time to just about make yourself a very weak cup of tea or a standard cup of water. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, if you're looking for something else to do, um, here's some awesome merchandise that we sell. Um, I have no idea what the actual t-shirt is, but what I can say with absolute guarantee is that it's clearly amazing because uh, our designers are great. That's on redmenmerch.com. Here's some cool stuff. The minutes, one minute till the show starts. <sighs> Getting exciting. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you can put in the comments section, who is your favorite Liverpool player of all time? Yeah, that should kill a few seconds. Kill 15, just saying it. Um, yeah, really. Really looking forward to this one. Thank you so much for sitting here um, in eager anticipation of what we're going to do for you. Oh, all oh, the things we're going to do. It's going to be great fun, great laugh. What a time we're going to have here. Oh, 27 seconds. Here we go. Here we go. Make sure that you've got your volume levels adjusted perfectly. You're sitting comfortably. And, you know, if you're the kind of person who's a very angry commenter, make sure you press that caps lock button first because that way we know that you're shouting in anger when you type your comments in. But obviously, just or just be nice, right? Anyway, four, three, two, one. Enjoy the show. Hey everyone, it is the Red Men Originals podcast with me, Paul Machen, Steve Hawk, Chloe Bloxham, Dan Club in the aftermath um, of Liverpool and Diogo Jota basically making Tottenham Hotspur cry. Um, it's great, it's a wonderful world to live in, um, particularly because of the vociferous celebrations that followed their uh, match winning equaliser um, that they got. Um, well, so so good. Is there ever been? I mean, we we did on Thursday Night Pint last week, Steve, like the most hated rival players, and Richarlison was in there. And I was like, I didn't. I was saying I didn't really feel it on Richarlison until he walked on the pitch, and the whole of Anfield erupted in a chorus of booze, and I was ready to have him right at the top of that list. And now he's back to being a little bit of the, the joke figure that he should be. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. I I didn't want that script because at three 0 I wanted us to beat them ten 0 or whatever, yeah. but. It before the game, you said, here's what's going to happen. Bit your hand off. Richarlison's going to get his top off, celebrate, show everyone his tattoo of his face on his own back, <laughs> and then shush the crowd, dance like a pigeon, and then 60 seconds later, be hands on heads because they've lost. I'd have, I'd have paid all the money in the world for it. It's it's the it's just absolutely glorious. The fact that that, that lad scored three goals. Well, he's, he's been booked three times this season taking his top off. Two mm. have been disallowed. And one was that. Yeah. Like it, everything about it is just, it's just the best. Everything about it is just the absolute best. And it somehow manages to be Everton and Spursy at the same time. Yeah. And that's just, that is the absolute brilliant, most br brilliant thing about it. It's the, it's the highlight of the season. It's they've, better than the Everton 7 0 against Man United. They've it's married glorious. up. Yeah, that's it. They've taken something. They've taken the most everything ever and married it with being Spursy. Chloe, and you've, you've delivered on Richarlison Pigeon celebrating his way to, uh, to tears. Yeah, it was absolutely boss. I remember, like, 3-3, three, three, you were just... The ground was absolutely people fuming. People walked out. Yeah, people mm. did walk out. Um, I, I remember fuming, and I thought, it, it just had to be him. His bleach white hair, I was like, oh, for God's sake. He was using a steward as someone to, like, hold himself up, going mental in their away crowd as if he hadn't scored only one goal this season in the Premier League for Spurs. Um and I was absolutely livid. And all of a sudden, Lucas Moura steps up and just passes Diego Jota the ball. And, like, if there's anyone in that position on in Liverpool that I wanted to be, it's going to be Diego Jota. Yeah. The finish is underrated. I've not heard anyone speak about it. It's a brilliant finish. And the fact that is, he just he told the crowd, the cop, to calm down and then sat hmm. down and played his FIFA, I was like, oh, my God. You can relate to that, can't you? Yeah, I can. Yeah, very much so, yeah. <laughs> game game Me and Weekend League. It's just the whole thing, Dan, is delicious. Like, it's it's just you watch it because I've actually 
almost watched Spurs' celebrations more than I've watched that goal yeah. because it's everything. It's like the bench emptying, it's Son jumping up and fist pumping the crowd and he, he then comes over to do the little pigeon thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like watching people getting on the Titanic oh, in hindsight. You know what's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, There's a it. certain sweetness to it, isn't there, now it's you're like, watching it back. Yeah. It's like someone mentioned, remember we, obviously the Real Madrid game and me and Edel got, went mental at 2-0 and it went viral because I oh, look at these idiots celebrating. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, ah, well, in the moment we never knew what was going to come. No. But when you know what's coming, I can see why people are getting great delight out of it. Like I got loads of stick for that one. Like, you know, when um, Salah gets the second when Courtois just did so yeah, often. Yeah. It, it, it was a bit like that. When you when you watch it in high, it's like knowing what's about to happen. Mm. You spot more things. Because at the time, it was just heads in hands, gutted, like you can't yeah. believe that this idiot of all people has just done that to us. And then yeah. Yeah, knowing what's coming, it was no, just... It felt like it was always going to be him. You know, when he came on, and like, they felt like yeah, it would be him to score the goal. But now it's come full circle. You go, couldn't happen to a bigger prick. Would it? You know I mean? <laughs> it couldn't have happened to, and it was just so so sweet. And you're right, the combination of Everton and Spurs combining to produce that beautiful moment at Anfield. It's so so sweet. And Chloe's right, by the way, on Jota, like the calmest man in the stadium, probably in Liverpool at the time, as we're all losing our minds, heart rate are through the roof. What a bloke! But like I say. With Charleston, it's just so beautiful. You know what made it even better though? All these Everton Twitter pages, Richarlison, Richarlison. Yeah. Richie Lott! Yeah. <laughs> and the like... watch along stuff, the Tottenham watch along, and then that fan in the crowd today, then who's seen that yeah. video of yeah. him giving it the big, oh. and it's beautiful, mate, it really is. All of them, I mean, ex- expressions faking all of his celebrations was a bit odd, but the um, the twins from, I think yeah. it's We Are Tottenham, um, brilliant. You know what I mean? Two people. Born out of the same, we couldn't be less in sync. By the way, when it comes to the uh, <laughs> literally, they couldn't, they're as close as you can get to being one person, and they couldn't even do a high ten uh, in, in the middle of the in the middle. Of it's the, the, there's still time for a winner here. That's the line yeah. that does me. Great. Yeah, you're right. There is. Yeah, the thing that sums it up is that bit at the end where they just I can't. I'm paraphrasing, but it's on the lines of like this, like. What what are you doing to us, Tottenham? You know what I mean? It's like this football club, Tottenham what bit? It's like and it's just like. All he's basically there is encapsulated everything it is to be a Tottenham Hotspur fan of the idea that they feel like they're going to one of the greatest comebacks in Premier League that history, mm. and then they basically throw it away in the in the final minute. So oof. I had that. I watched it on the watch along as well. Bloody hell, that was just an experience. I've never seen a man get from one to a hundred. Back to North, back to 100 again in he was, a minute. He, he didn't even celebrate though when the goal had went in, and then. Once you'd like screamed, that's when he stood up. I don't he think was... he was. I think he. I think he droned out. Yeah. And then he just point. starts pointing at his crotch. He offered, <laughs> he offered someone to suck something at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He told Rich the Charles and stuck his nuts. Basically, yeah. it was. Um, it was quite the. It was quite the event. But like I say, I, when we had that show on Thursday night, pint, this rankings of hated players. I wanted Richardson higher. Yeah. I ate him. I, him and him, Bernardo Silva and Bruno Fernandez were the three that I was adamant needed to be top of that list. And I don't know if that makes him go higher or lower on this list, but well, it, it, it's on it's on the the funniest things that have happened. And there's loads of them. Pickford's against Everton. Mm-hmm. This one, there's just so many really hilarious things. Ronaldo's <laughs> goal offside. You really rattle through it. There you go. Ronaldo's goal. Lissandro you know, Martinez won either way this season. Y- yeah, Salah. Yeah, yeah. There's just sometimes it's just you've got to accept that you're a meme, and. Van Dijk got a little bit on the first goal, but Richarlison's getting it now. The, the content on social media last night was that's when Twitter and Instagram and all, it's at its absolute best when you when everyone's in on it and it's all of this. And I, I can't even say I feel sorry for him in any way, shape, or form. He's got a life size tattoo of his own face on his back. He deserves every single part of this. And it's glorious, and I love it. And it's he amazing. is the Alan Partridge super fan, except <laughs> for himself. <laughs> yeah. It's him, Neymar, and Ronaldo. It's just the best man. He, yeah. yeah, it's just glorious. What a weird out. Um, it's just a great game of football. Ultimately, because we won, it would have been it would have been a very different tone to everything if we just drawn that game at the end. Um, it really, genuinely would have been. And I'm not sure how much it affects the overall picture of the league, other than you know we've we've moved up into fifth, which I think is a, is certainly a good thing. Um. <laughs> Dan, it was just like it was like a classic Liverpool big Anfield game. You know, mm-hmm. we, it, we threatened it with with Real Madrid, of course, but 
there's a time of 3-0, you're thinking, well, yeah, this is it, you know, which is going to be a 4, 5, 6, how many are we going to score? But actually, in, 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 a, in the end, it goes back to being what we've kind of suspected about this team. It's far more of a 17-18 Liverpool classic blitz than a 18-19 and beyond one. Yeah, it is, yeah. And I think kind of all the problems and the beauty of our season were kind of encapsulated within that 90-odd minutes, weren't they? Because we were brilliant for a little bit and then we were really poor for a little bit. We really poor us at the back, I think, moreover. And I think, yeah, we did. We were definitely sort of master architects of our own downfall and the fact that we allowed them into the game. We gave them confidence. I mean, they kind of, to be fair to Tottenham, like, as much as we're all laughing at them today, and rightfully so, like, the little bit of hope that we did give them, particularly in the first half, they did take that and run with it, and they did come on to us, and we did... I suppose allow them um, to have a sniff in the game when really, I think at 3-0, I think we all thought there's going to be refunds getting given out here for these away fans. Yeah. And I think we all thought this could be 7, 8, 9, whatever, cricket score sort of territory, which I know you said in the, in the ground. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of us, there are still problems there quite clearly. We should be conceding three goals at home, let's put it that way. Yeah. You know, if we're going to be brutally honest about it. But like I say, it does kind of just sum up our season and has been a little bit nuts. But like, like you say, Anfield does that. Anfield produces their moments. It's Newcastle 4-3 from all them years ago all yeah. over. We have those moments in us. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know what was surprising about this game that I haven't seen in a long time is the year we won the league, it was a never-say-never-die attitude. It was a go-until-the-end. It was a never-give-up. And I've not seen that this season when we've collapsed or crumbled. We've carried on doing it. We've not picked ourselves up. We've not reacted. And yet we get a little bit lucky with the ball from Lucas Moura. But it's the anticipation yeah. and it's the way that he's dragged that moment. He's became the hero. He's stepped up. I've not seen that at all this season. Yeah, I think it's what's interesting about that, because the thing that's been kind of ticking around my head, is it's the lads that we've bought in to reboot the squad are the ones who aren't burned out and jaded and they've not been running a thousand miles a, a, a week for the last like five years mm. they're the ones who are actually helping us get out of this at the back end at the back end of the season yep. you know even like someone like Harvey Elliott coming in not a brilliant 90 minute performance but that's just a good first half he's, he's part he's part of the good things that, that we do Curtis Jones coming in as a young player desperate to go and prove himself Cody Gappo new sign and absolutely done on it in the in the false nine for us Lewis Diaz another and, and you could go through it these are the lads that are that are carrying the team um as they should be and that's the thing about Thiago Jota yeah he's he's not his head's not done in because it's not like He's got he's got something to prove. He's hungry. You know, he's had loads of time out with injuries. He just wants to get on the pitch and score goals. And now he's in a world where he's gone from starting a few. He's on the bench mm. for this one. He he knows that he just needs to take his chance. And that's the thing that offers me most encouragement. I totally agree with you, Chloe. It's one thing, it was a thing I referenced is Steve, we've got to we needed to prove we can win this way. Because it's all well and good winning seven nil, but you don't learn anything from a seven nil win other than your opponent is probably a bit shit or has got a bit of a weak mentality. There's more to winning. We learnt more winning that four three than we would have done if it had stayed three two. I think. Yeah, maybe. What what it does show is Liverpool are starting to be resilient again. So mm. you know, going going one 0 down at West Ham and coming back to win when when last night we've done that away from home. This one before Forest get two back against us and the edge don't fall off. They go and get the winner. So that's they are showing a bit of that about them. They haven't just rolled over and had the bellies tickled because they did. Uh, I'd say you know just post World Cup and a bit before it as well. I was at Brighton when we got ran off the park and we no one even put a tackle in. Yeah. Uh, you know, Wolves away and mm. Brentford, we looked weak. So th- to show a little bit of bottle and a bit of something about it, it is great to see. Um, there are still problems. It's not perfect. That's why you're fifth. You know, you, you, Dan's right. That that should be a 7 nil. or it can't be. It can never get to three all. It shouldn't happen. Mm. So there's still things to, to work on. But I, I get your point in that. Like this, you, you called the Klopp 2.0 a few times when we've had conversations and stuff. And if it starts to feel a bit like that in that, we are moving away. Mo Salah aside and Trent Alexander Arnold, they're they you know, the two mainstays. The other lads who are of that ilk really aren't having their best you know, even the goalkeepers having a little bit of a wobble at the minute. Van Dyke's looking a bit shaky, Andy Robertson's looking a little bit on edge, mm. Henderson the same. But then you look at, you know, it's you, you it's Jones and it's Gakpo and it's Diaz and it's Jota. They're the ones who are really obviously Trent just being amazing as well mm. as helping, but it is the, it's the new breeze almost stepping up, and at some point, Liverpool, we're going to keep harking back to it. Is that that team's not? It's not. It doesn't. It's not a thing anymore. This is what this is the new Liverpool now. We we're not. We are Jurgen's second phase of all this. He built one, and it was amazing. He's now fully invested in this second one, he, and he's clearly got the players. Some more of them are needed. I think that's. But like, 
Liverpool aren't an absolute tyre fire disaster that some people were saying they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. They've got the goalie, they've got the right back, they've got the centre backs, a couple of them I think still. They've got the left back, they've got Trent, they've got Gak, they've got the front all five of the forwards. I'm absolutely sound with. Mm-hmm. A, Curtis Jones is emerging as a, as a definite, if not guaranteed starter in the future. Who knows? At least a really decent squad option. It isn't as bad as hopefully we thought. And like I said the other day, I said this to Neil Jones on my show. It's like it's if. Not- if <laughs> if on I'm the star of the show. If in uh, if you can finish fifth in your absolute worst season ever, which it feels like it it, it has been at times, that is something to build on. It. I don't think you 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 million miles. They've got work to do in the in the summer, but it, it, it this is the level of how crap it gets. Then that's a, in a weird way that's quite encouraging because you just but think at the right players. And pers- you, pers- perspective oh. matters on that because it's the thing. A three-three draw for Tottenham yesterday feels like a win for them because yeah. they've come from three goals down, and that's the thing. Fifth, fifth will 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 rationalise that, you know, at the end of the season. Because if we go in on a nine-game winning streak or an eleven-game unbeaten streak or whatever it ends up being, then that's something you can carry into the into the season. Whereas if you finish fifth on the back of losing loads of games and you continue that up and down form, there's nothing to say it's not going to carry on next season that kind of thing I, I I agree with that and I, again it's perspective is the important thing for me um, Chloe because all of a sudden mention Curtis Jones I thought he was brilliant okay. and I think he's I think he's more than held his own in these last few games and now we're in a world where I know Thiago like Thiago get injured again but like Thiago's not been he's not been starting even when he has been fit Jordan Henderson's benched in that one as well and James Milner they're now the lads who are coming into the team and that's the way it should be we're talking about like Klopp 2.0 you might need to go in the, in the transfer window and actually get by better than Jones and Elliot and Fabinho, for example, in the midfield. But actually, you're starting a game with a 29 year old DM. You're starting with a 22 year old guy, you know, playing on the left side of the of the free box, whatever you want to call it, and then Harvey Elliott, 19, 20. That's a rebooted side. And then what's meant to happen is the guys you were in the first team, they're the ones who are understudying it now. It feels like. Yeah, we are looking at next season's more like next season's side than the side that's gone that's gone before. Yeah, I think that you know we all know that we need midfielders in this transfer window, but it's midfielders for competition because if Curtis Jones keeps playing the way he is, then he deserves a, a spot in the team. He deserves a say. He was man of the match the other day. He was the best player on the park, um, and he's been. You know, I remember he came in against Chelsea. It was an absolute horrific game of footy to watch, but I came away from it thinking that he was the only one who could really hold it. You know, keep his head up, um, and from there he's just every every run of games that he's being able to play in you know he's done really well in you'd also look at it Curtis Jones was the last midfield sub uh, against West Ham Henderson came off before him mm-hmm. and yet Henderson's not starting it's Curtis Jones who we've asked to go again and again and again yeah. and we're putting trust in him and rightfully so and- same again yesterday same again yesterday. He, was, yeah. he, he, he took he took Hendo off before he took Curtis off he brought yeah. he'd done it very late, wasn't it? Just I think he wants a Milner on the pitch to try and see it out. Keep like him it. Because he's yeah. because he's young and he's and he, whilst he's fit, he's fresh. And, and, and he hasn't played that much footy this season. Exactly. This yeah. is that's six games on the spin now where he started, and like you say, he's probably got better throughout. You know, yeah, as you yeah, go through, he's, he's gone better and better and better. So he's got everything you need, I think, to to be whatever he wants. It's up. To, it's how it goes. He might end up being a regular player. He might end up being a squad player, but. When we when it was bad and we were just, we were just couldn't wait for the season to end, I I don't know if it was almost like let's see what we've got with him, let's have a look what we've got, yeah. give him a run of give him the end of the season and he might be great or you know what you might finally find out he's fit but he just isn't good enough and maybe that ultimatum's been laid down that I'm going to like if you want to be your next season mate you've got to go and earn it you can't, you don't just you can't just have a Liverpool spot because you're a scouser hmm. you've got to go and play and earn it and to be fair Dan he's, he's well, done the there job was, there that. was talk of even sort of putting him in the shop window a little yeah. bit when he Loans first got introduced stuff, yeah. to the side yeah to try and get some more value to him in terms of the summer or a loan deal like you say but credit to him he's he's absolutely taken this chance he's been given and ran with it he's been superb and like Chloe says I think he's got better and better every performance he's been consistently really good and it kind of dawned on me yesterday just on the role he's playing because obviously we've seen a little bit of it now and I think he is playing the Wijnaldum role it's been said a lot but it's interesting because there's a lot of comparisons there in many senses because Wijnaldum when he went away with Holland liked to go and express himself and do more forward and Curtis Jones in an ideal world would also be doing that but he's following Jurgen Klopp's instructions not just to stay in the side but for the good 
hold of the side and he's doing it brilliantly. He's probably sort of curbing his natural instincts to go and be more creative. Yes, he gets his goal yesterday, but he's actually willing to do the hard yards. He's willing to be that presser and do that work instead. And like Chloe says, in a minute, it's his shirt and it's up to Thiago and whoever we sign for that matter to come and take it off him because it's been outstanding. That's the thing with, with transfers is I want... So you, you've got the the experienced players, the Hendersons, the Milners. I don't know where the Milners going to go, but you've got the midfielders, Thiago there, who, when whoever we bring in, and even the likes of Curtis Jones and Arvey Elliott, they should be the ones who are helping them through this. You don't need to help us as much on the pitch when you need it, then yeah, but you're the one in the dressing room who's helping absolutely every single person out. Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott don't have a lot of experience. I'd like someone to come in with a bit more experience. Yeah. Champions League football, maybe, you know, still young that we can breed them in and they can have a long career at Liverpool, but have a little bit more experience than Curtis Jones because that can help him out as well. Um, you can't have four 19 to 20 year olds with hardly any experience that's not going to work so you've got these three banks you've got Henderson your Thiago your Fabinho who are your really experienced one it all can help you yeah. through you've got the developers which are Harvey Elliott Curtis Jones Stefan Bajetic and then you've got Can't the middle bank who have a little bit of either Premier League Champions League wherever experience yeah. who are in the middle and use both of them to help that's what we're missing isn't it Sorry, the middle gap and also I like, I don't know if you want to touch it now, I don't want to hijack a show bit, but like, the Thiago thing is, is a thing now. Like You cannot rely on that fella. No. We are at Daniel Sturridge levels of when he's playing the sound, but do not have any expectation that that fella's going to be fit. It's just another injury. It's almost, I, I, I think, I might be wrong, that he would have played. I, I think Harvey's playing because mm. Hendo's knackered and it should have been Thiago and he's injured. We are at a point now where he is just a complete luxury. And I, I think... When he's fit and firing, he's brilliant. So we saw this with Latter and Daniel Sturridge even. He was still really, really good when he could get on the pitch. You just couldn't bank on him. Was it the... It was four, 14, 15, 15, 6 in that range when all our hopes just pinned on this fella. Mm -hmm. And you just can't... You can't have it. And my... You know, if you're looking ahead towards the summer, you've got to almost take him out of the equation. I remember when Jürgen, at the start of the season, we started listing like Chamberlain and Cater. <laughs> and I was like, never plays, never plays. Yeah. You can add Thiago into that mix now. So Chloe's right. Yeah. Milner looks like the, these reports with Brighton and Burnley might have something in them. So, it, Thiago's got to almost be out the equation. Now he's just a bonus if you've got him. You've got to build a squad, presuming he's not fit. Um, and I wonder, again, I don't know what the resource like available, whatever. Would they even sell him? Potentially, if someone fancied it. You know what I mean? I, I don't know where we're at with him, but it, that's a... If you throw all this into the mix, and that's why Curtis Jones definitely should be here next season. I mean, and, and he will be, and he should be. He's, yeah. he's earned it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the answer is no, because you'd be stupid to sell it when you're already losing two midfielders on free transfers. You don't need to then make another problem. Three, 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 three of Milner, yeah. Cater, Ox. Well, yeah, if Milner goes. Yeah. Um, the, but yeah, it's... <sighs> The good thing that you got there, there's an opportunity for someone like, I and mean, Harvey Elliott was talking about, I think he was, he was he was interviewed in the mix zone by the Echo and was saying, don't mind other players coming in because it just means mm. it's a challenge and it gives you, the, you get you get the chance to, to push for more. And I think we have this expectation sometimes when players come in because like, like, there's a lot of like buzz around certain names within there. So let's just say Alexis McAllister is an example there. Like, well, he'll come in and he'll definitely be better than what we've already got. He might, he, probably, he might be, you know, because he fits into what you're saying there, Chloe. He's, he's got some more Premier League experience. He's got World Cup winning experience to, to go with it. But that's the challenge laid down. And we, we've seen this happen previously, is when Oxley Chamberlain and Naby Keita come in, now there's a variety of other reasons, fitness being being one of the predominant ones. But Genie Van Aldum, Jordan Henderson step up and actually get to a point where they, they remain in the team on merit and that's the next challenge for Curtis Jones it's challenge for the rest of the season stay in the side mm -hmm. keep make that your shirt and then when some other lad comes in in the summer who wants that shirt then you're in a real fight for it because actually we're, benefit, we're be benefiting from competition already again look at Diogo Jota he, he, he's come back into the team you got, you've now got him effectively Darwin Nunes him and Diaz fighting for a place because Gakpo's going to start the vast majority of football matches um, and so and look at, look at the hunger that it's going to it's going to build out in them and, and what happens is they don't want they don't want to stay and fight for the place but they never had the right mentality in the first place and Liverpool's history is littered with footballers who saw their arse when we signed someone else and moved on and ended up having a career and I'm, I'm rather naming names you can read all Psyche users books from like the 80s 90s and 2000s there's, there's a half of it dedicated to a lad who went 
probably should have just stuck it out and had a, and, and had a real fight for it. But instead, I went and played lower end Premier League, and then I'm playing top end Championship, and then I'm winding my career down instead. And yeah, there's a big there's a big challenge ahead for those for those lads. I want to ask the question because um, Ryan Mason, um, look, young man, hot headed, um, comes into his post match interview and says uh, that they they gifted us four goals. Mm. Um, they, you can say anything you want the internet or the world you can the last two definitely the first the two, last one definitely obviously one, literally, this literally is, but, yeah. I mean Romero's challenge for the third one no the first one let's see how that's a gift in any way shape oh, the second one. one it was just good play by Liverpool the second one's fine yeah I, so it begs the question how many goals did Liverpool gift Spurs hmm. I can tell you how many we nearly gifted yeah, them yeah good Robbo in the first half yeah definitely a gift um, um, I don't think we defended well on any of them I think First one's dodgy. First one, Harry Kane had the freedom of Anfield inside our six-yard yeah. box. That's problematic. Well, Van Dyke slipped. Van Dyke slips. Van Dyke slips. Van Dyke, so slips. Van Dyke falls over and basically allows a free, pa- a free pass into the box. And Robbo decides, I'm better off leaving Harry Kane on his own and trying to close down Perisic. Well, that was, yeah. that the, was the, like, the that second was one. Yeah. Son oh, just know, runs off. A goal, it, it's a oh, great, it's a great pass, a a but goal. he runs off Canate and Trent. The third one, Darwin Nunes, is just, I don't care what you say, just be stronger, lad. Why are you going with it for your foot? And James yeah. Milner gives a stupid And, stupid and a stupid But well, we saw a free kick minutes later in the yeah. Yeah, third Yeah, I think what happened on the third one in particular was that when we did when we got Salah got a judge to a foul to Ben, ben Davies, Davies yeah. we lost that answer, everyone yeah. went nuts yeah. including James Milner and he's fuck fucking stopping this game yeah. and I just went I'm, you know, I'm going to boot Harry Kane which not like him is it really no no <laughs> I, I, and listen mate I reckon if you take a, I reckon if you can take a free on Harry yeah it's true you probably, that is, you, that probably you might yeah. take it um, defended really badly I think all three goals were defended poorly in different ways the first goal is just that's what's going to happen when Trent's doing this midfield hybrid thing there's going to be space over there mm-hmm Van Dijk does the right thing. He reacts well. He reads the situation. He's on the other side. He gets there. He just falls over. It's, it's hard lines a little bit. I don't think we've quite trained yet for that eventuality no. of what happens when Van Dijk has to go and actually cover for Canata, who's covering for Trent. Yeah. And therefore, who then covers... For, if Robbo then has to cover for Van Dijk, who covers for Robbo? Because I, I, I say I disagree. When you look at how that situation develops... The obvious man for Robbo to go and mark is, as you say, is it Perisic? You say who, who makes the first run because there's only two guys back there. Someone's no, got no, to go and cover. Robbo goes to close the cross down. Yeah. Perisic who skins Van Dijk. Yeah. My, oh, my, Sorry, my, yeah. 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 Basically, but Robertson goes over to cover the guy who's in, the, who's in the middle. Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Kane comes in a rise from, from behind. Someone else needs to spot that danger but, and go and cover for Robertson. So here's the point. I'd be asking Curtis Jones on the left side of the of in. midfield to get back in. It's, but what if a third arm, runner it's... comes in? Yeah. Who gets him? It's just someone. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a noble. It's one of those situations. Yeah. They it all stems, it's, and it stems a little bit from, from Robertson. who had a bit of a poor game, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it, there was a couple of times where we did it. We not, not give, but like, we, a poor pass or a poor touch led to a bit of a scramble and then that scramble turned into yeah. a transition. The there were a few Vol- of those. Robertson Vol- Vol- an interesting one, isn't it? He was, uh, yeah, it that might be his worst game. It probably was and I was sort of waxing lyrical about how well he'd fit into that system because it is a new role for him playing almost as the left centre back of a three when we have Trent in midfield but mm. There's a lot of talk now about what that looks like moving forward. Do we need to go and get a proper one? Because obviously City, when they do, have like Ake and Akanji, who are yeah. natural at centre back yeah. as well. Yeah. So maybe that's something we might have to consider. He, play, he does play on on side for the goal. There's a mo- yeah. there's a moment, sorry, and it's not. I think he gives away a corner. I've not I've not fluffed his lines a little bit, and that the, the cop goes absolutely nuts at Robertson. Mm. And it, there's a moment where he like looks, I can see him, he's looking at the crowd, like someone's clear, people are clearly giving him shit. And he's, and it was a bit like, he's obviously not used no. to his no. own fans going like, what the fuck are you doing? And flipping on him. And then he kind of composed himself and got on with the game. But he had, he had, he, had, he did have a little bit of a struggle. And again, it's his balance, isn't it? We're talking about this where we, we've, we've rebooted the system, the team, and it suits certain players. Mm. Down to the ground, Trent being the, the and obvious Curtis. and Curtis being the obvious ones, and even to some extent, you know, whoever's playing the left side of forwards, you know, who's playing oh. and, and Gakpo, mm. Canate uh, as well, I should say on that. And I think you could say really Fabinho because yeah. he's got a bit more cover, yeah. a bit more cover in the middle of the park. And that's the thing, sorry, Fabinho, I did not recognise him in that game, which 
I didn't think was bad because at all of the times this season, if the goal's gone in, you've looked at where Fabinho yeah. is and you thought, what the hell is he doing? Today, it, right? <laughs> the, the other day, yesterday, sorry, I didn't I didn't really notice. I, I noticed him covering gaps, which was quite good. I still I saw think there's better. examples that he, he could be getting back in yeah. quicker, you know, for the, he for the goals. Nice. He still looks nice. Well, I said this before, I did this on my, um, on my channel this week, last week, just gone. He's played more minutes than any other midfielder in a season where everyone's saying he looks knackered and he's played too much and you know and everyone's going all his crap and he might be, but he might just need someone to take a thousand odd minutes off him a season. Yeah, he's left right to just stay fit, did he? Yeah. And, yeah. The... But sorry, but sorry. The, the 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 point we're making is I was making is that yeah we, we've we've changed the system. It suits certain players down to the ground, but. So, some it doesn't. Some are, some are doing a job for the team, and Andy Robertson is very much doing a job for the team. Canate is doing a bit of a job for the team, and actually the ones who, the ones who are almost suffering a little bit from it are probably Virgil and Robbo to some extent, and maybe Salah in terms of how much actually extra work he's having to do. As much as it actually, it's no bad thing I think to make Salah have to really get involved in the game a bit more. But it's going to be telling to see what happens in the summer yeah. and what we do. You know, if we buy a left footed centre half in the summer, mm. it tells you a lot about what we're doing. Moving the other right one, so obviously, the other one I'd add to that list in terms of struggling with the new system would be whoever plays on the right yeah. side of the midfield in that attacking eight. Because yeah. Henderson hasn't done it with any great success just yet. Harvey Elliott was okay at it yesterday. But that role in itself takes on a whole new dynamic. So who fills that void would be interesting. I mean, yeah. we saw Thiago do it against West Ham for a little bit. But as Steve says, we can't rely on him to stay fit. The, the so problem with that role is that it what what do we need from that because everyone talks about the defensive stuff but it's actually not it's the it's the offensive stuff it's the going outside Salah it's breaking lines minutes. it's getting into the box mm. and it, it remi- I said this the other day it reminded me of earlier on in the season when Milner was playing left of the the midfield three and he was doing a functionally great job it's a bit like someone who, I remember a, a mate of mine playing he was, was a really good basketballer playing five a side with us and he, he he instinctively knew every position to take up on it because it's ex- exactly the same sort of basic layout go and find yourself some space make yourself available but he didn't have the technical prowess to kick a football <laughs> so we pass it to him because he was the right person to pass to but he couldn't kick a ball and that's an extreme example I'm not saying Milner's that but he was doing exactly what was asked of him but he no longer possessed the skill set to be in those areas of the pitch and, and that's a worry for Henderson mm. Elliot does he's got all the skill set to be in the final third of the pitch but it's the he's left footed for a start so mm. you don't really want him going outside Mo Salah and it comes back to the physicality. He lost that when the game switched, and that's when you needed Jordan Henderson to go and dig in for us. He didn't quite, didn't quite and have also, that. I thought, and again, Henderson, to show I don't think made Liverpool better. You know, the Jota one, obviously, in the end did. But like, there's, there's like, it's every system you play, it's, got, it's just got pros and cons, and it'll come down to how everyone does it. What it is doing, it's just giving us the absolute best of Trent Alexander all again. Another assist, you know, that, that is. His body language when he assisted the, the, the Jones goal was like, I'm the fucking man. Yeah. It was very much that, wasn't it? It was like, look, get on me. I am boss me. That's what it was. And fair play to him. It's about time. He felt like, you know, he's, you, you, you hear bits of him and you, sometimes you, you wonder if his confidence levels probably did take a hit. He was he was nowhere near it. He was, he was absolutely brilliant. There's, I still think there's a couple of lads who are getting their heads around there. I think Darwin's another one. Um, he's, he's come on quite a few times now. I know he, he got his goal against Leeds, it, but he, he looks... He looks like he, he hasn't got a place in this at all. There's that no... Leeds game is, and that Leeds goal is how he's going to score his goals, yeah. I think, for yeah. us. I think this idea that he's going to be a target man and he needs to work more on that. He needs to hold the ball up better because mm. that was one of the reasons when why we struggled. Is because he's not winning. You were saying he <laughs> doesn't win headers, can't win headers to save his life. Mm. At the moment, he's just too wild and too reckless. He's a bit Simicast like in that, in that way. He's, he's got all the enthusiasm, but none of the timing. Um, but if you put him as a number nine, and you had Trent picking passes out him. There's no reason why that couldn't be De Bruyne and Haaland sort of sort of two point oh. He's got the yeah, right absolutely. movement in, the, in between the sticks and the right natural finishing Jürgen's ability. Physicality for it. And also Jürgen's was, he, he's, he's kind of half alluded to this what Ray's saying. It. He, he basically said he's not playing because he doesn't defend well enough. And I think we kind of saw that with that goal. That's a very odd technique to, to defend your back post with. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for ingenuity, but I don't know flying, kar- flying karate kicks. Uh, when you when you're six foot five, whatever, I bet he's massive. He's not. He's like six, six foot four, one two. He's he's, he's, small. he's he's not as big as anyone thinks. No, Darwin is. He's shorter than Cody Gakpo. For, for his, yeah. he's more like he's he's a little bit bigger than for me. You know, he's sort of in between. Yeah. I, fair enough. Maybe I'm wrong, but like when you go with Winnetta, like Chloe's right. He, yeah. he, that, he he's, he's got a lot to go with him. He's got the he's got lots of positives. He's definitely someone I don't think is benefiting at all because he's the third choice left winger now. 
he's probably the third choice centre forward. He's not got anyway. He's not taking most Salah's spot at the minute. No. So you talk about people with with points to prove. Yeah. It's on him. It's it, it, it's up to him. If you want listen, if you want to go and play and you want to play every week in the Premier League, then go and earn it because at the minute yeah. he's he's fifth choice. And if Roberto Firmino was fifth, he might be sixth choice. I, I agree with that. Just to go back to the Robertson point that we we were talking about earlier, he had an absolute shocker of a game. But I did read Jota got interviewed by LFC yeah. TV, and he turned around and said, as soon as they equalised to make it three three, Andy Robert came up to me and said believe, keep believing, go up there, believe in yourself. And that's the leadership skills. Okay, he had an absolute yeah. shocking yeah. game, but he instantly pulled Jota aside and yeah. went, we're going to go long, go gamble, believe in yeah. yourself and gamble. Well, we're allowed, and that's we're allowed leadership. to say someone had a bad, bad game, game and it gets, yeah. it gets yeah. misconstrued 100%. often. Particularly, like, you can say he's had a bad season, by the way. You know, I know people yeah. think Robinson's had a terrible, terrible season by his standards. I think that's over egging it slightly, but mm. it's, you don't, you might lose bits and pieces from your game as you age, but he's got a winning mentality. Doesn't go anywhere, and I think that's what it's on. I, 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 we've relied on the same lads too much, and that's the problem with the transfer. How we've approached transfers and how we've we've refreshed the squad. It's not Thiago, Henderson, Fabinho, Van Dijk's fault. It's actually the fault of the lads you've either we've bought in who haven't cut the mustard or the inability to get rid of them quickly and buy other mm-hmm. ones in to, to do it and we've we've put too much reliance on too old and too young um but robertson is in that in that period he needs and we're managing him quite well actually you know i think there's there's so much more to come from him as a liverpool player still reference this this week as well or last week real madrid if luka modric and tony cruz and karen benzer were being asked to play three games a week all season they would be nothing like the players that they are but actually what they've done is they've gone and Bought supportive players around there that they can get by without them starting every single football match. So they do get to pick and choose. That's called having squad balance, and that mm. that 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 adds something to what we've got. I want to just talk about Trent because it's mad to see what a turnaround it's been. Got his first Premier League assist of the season, um, in on the second of January in a three-one defeat to Bre- away away at Brentford. Um, oh yeah, and then. He has obviously that game on the bench against Chelsea away at the start of this run. Since then, played every 90. Um, Arsenal assist, Leeds two assists, Forest assist, West Ham assist, uh, Tottenham Hotspur assist. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely ridiculous. And, uh, you know, we, we, people are going on and, you know, making the Kevin De Bruyne comparisons. He's a better passer than Kevin De Bruyne. <laughs> <laughs> He's a better passer. A, a passer. Oh, well. okay. He's a better player. Obviously, yeah. I think I think there's no one in the world who's a better pass than Trent Alexander. I, I, I might be hyperbole. Is he's got everything, mate? He's got all of it. He is outrageous. Like the obviously De Bruyne is world class footy player. He's one of the best players this league's ever had, mm-hmm. and he still is. He's still at a, at a level, but you know, even he's a little bit in and outish a little bit at times as well. I think what what Trent can do with the ball is. I, I, I better might be hard on right. the same the, the same level. It's, if a, not, it's, it's, it's a Liverpool podcast. You're no, no, I, I, I think I don't think it's like I'm not I'm not like saying like you know something like hype here, but you might be able to nitpick it. But like they're both just wizards. They see everything and they spot everything, and they're amazing. Like I'll be honest, the one at the weekend isn't the most difficult ball that Trent's ever gonna have to play. But mm-hmm. some of them, he is just he is just taking control of footy games. So he is just revolutionising what Liverpool are all about. I don't know, obviously, why they decided to change, whether it was just because they were shite and they thought, you know what, let's just do something else. It was always the plan, what the plan is going forward. There's loads about it, but in terms of, like, you just want the ball at his feet all the time. Every time I had the ball, I was on the wash on or whatever, I was going, just give it to Trent. I don't care where he is, who's near him. Just, I, I want just feed everything through him, and he did it again. And like I say, there's going to be negatives to it. There's a couple of lads who are... You know, couple, Jamie Redknapp's not having it, which I thought was really there's hilarious. There's a couple of lads like. who are playing, you know, he's playing the piano, and there's a couple of lads who are really carrying it for him. And at some point, they're going to be, they're gonna, that needs looking at because you mentioned Ibu Kanata, you mentioned whoever plays right of, of that midfield. There's Andy Robertson. They're almost like sacrificing themselves. They're, mm. They are very much carrying the piano so, so Trent can play it. But if he, if he keeps doing this, it's, it's well worth it. Yeah. The numbers speak for themselves, the performances speak for themselves. Yeah. You know, I said before, he thought he was the man, and he was the man. Well, okay. Jürgen said it, and he was and he, he was at pains to stress that Tottenham were a counter-attacking side. He's one of the best in Europe, didn't he, ahead of the game. And then he doubled down in a post-match and was like... And he made it sound like a bit of a criticism, and it is from Liverpool's perspective of, he's like, 
you're three nil down. They don't change how they play. You met a three nil. What's meant to happen? Because we this is how we normally rack scores up. Is you blitz early, then you stand firm, and then they're forced to overcommit. Men they give up their shape, they give up the game plan, and they throw the kitchen sink at you, and then you nail them, them on the and then you become the counter attacking side. I think back to that famous is it the Arsenal game where it's got the tunnel cam of Mo Salah running the length of the pitch and he's mm. being chased by like five men. <laughs> that comes about from those kind of situations, and that never really develops un- until right toward toward the end of that of that game for us. Um, I got a really interesting super chat here from Scott Hawks. Um. As always, thank you so much, Scott. Uh, it says, the person the system works for is Jürgen. It's setting the team up uh, as a whole for success and make it very clear who can and can't adapt for next season and confirming where we need to upgrade. Mm. I, I think that's a really interesting point because I think you talk about certain coaches of certain styles. So I remember under Benitez when it started to go wrong <clears throat> in an 9 10 season, you know, we blew that league title in the first five games of the season. And then by the time Christmas came around, he's hanging on by a thread and he goes back to how we played three seasons earlier and, and then the fans had to fall off because all of a sudden we're back to watching turgid defensive football and that's not working and we're actually not even winning things. Jürgen doesn't have a formation. He doesn't have... His style of play is about intensity and mm. getting in people's face and, and positivity and attitude and it's it's like a it's like a holistic thing. It's the coaches around them that help set how you go about delivering that for us. And that's one of the, the beauties of what we've seen is, you know, it's actually Pep Landers' influence in terms of turning around what we've done. But you can recognise a Jürgen Klopp team. It doesn't matter what for, what formation it plays and that's kind of the the real encouragement from this is we have made a huge change and it does need tweaking. But it's very recognisably a Jürgen Klopp Liverpool team that we've been watching, and we haven't really been watching that for a lot of the season. So, yeah, I think that's the one of the major things that we can be um, we can be super positive. Um, got one here from Felipe H uh, with seven ninety nine Australian dollars. Thank you so much. As a neutral, uh, he says, sign a left centre back, three midfielders, and you'll be back next season very strong. Probably a nice day out in Dublin next May for LFC yes. incoming big up. Oh, is that the Europa League Europa final? League final, oh, yeah. Dublin, yeah. It's going to be the greatest day in the history of the world. If we get to that, mate, honestly, they'll be allowed to swim into it. it, it, it <laughs> absolutely outrageous. I, I get the point on the left centre half bit, is that all you buy... I wouldn't be shocked if they sold Timokas and bought someone who can play left back hand. Yeah. Left back hand. Sorry, the four, he can be a left back. You yeah. know what I mean? Because... Um, I, I mean, we're going to speak about the full game later, but like, if Robbo needs a rest, do we trust Costas to be able to play that role it's like that? It's, it's a big call. So, mm-hmm. listen, I, I think Robertson's been really good up until I think he had a bad game. I won't just write, I don't, don't, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater after one game because I actually think he's done quite well in that position overall since mm-hmm. the change. He, he had a stinker. Sometimes players just drop absolute stinker games, and he, that was his. And yeah, he deserves the benefits of the doubt. Though. He does do, he does, and he has done well up until that point. I think you're right, but there are also you look at him sort of fundamentally as a footballer, and his strengths are the fact that he can maraud up the wing, and he, he's not he going is, to do he, a lot of that allowed, anymore. He is still allowed to, he do, is still allowed to do that, but a lot of the time, sort of certainly from a defensive standpoint, he's going to be acting as that third centre half, and they aren't his main thing. So it's in, I do think we need to sort of maybe look at that in the window and Scott right by the way on that is because these last few games now are going to give us a real insight into what we need and it's going to really nail down what we need because there are certain players reveling in it Trent being the main one obviously um, and there are certain players that aren't quite au fait with it yet and I think Robertson might just fall into that second category do you think there's a risk though Chloe as well of like it is the Trent show and if Trent picks up a knock or get a suspension or something. It's like, it's all having backups for everything. Mm. You, how do you, how'd you back that up though? I, I, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a bit like, it's the same issue we had a little bit with Trent Alexander on that right back is that mm. there's no one like him. We're talking about like the, the, the De Bruyne of that level. That might be the, if you're gonna, if your whole entire system next season is this, I mean, you've got to have someone who can at least do a, an impression of it and that's going to be hard. For, that's we a, own that's that already, by the Thiago. way. Carry on. Nope, carry on. Who's your... Stephen Bichette. Do you think? 100%. Okay. I'm convinced of that. By the way, I, I don't think we need a right. I don't think we need another right back. I think Stefan Pachetta just does that job. Everyone's got him. He's on the ball. Everyone's got. He's got. A, he's got some stuff on the ball. Like, everyone's got Pachetta's nailed as like the Fabinho understudy. Whereas in reality, he's a centre half that we've moved into yeah. midfield, and then we tried him in an eight, and he was okay. even better. He's the opposite. Everyone thinks it's got to be a. You got to go and find a right back who can play midfield. But fucking. Good luck. Do the opposite way around. Good luck. I yeah, can yeah, live with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can live with that. Fair play. Yeah. Um, I am I'm slightly worried about that because, I mean, we, we can talk about Trent being absolutely unbelievable. It was 
the areas he managed to, you know, float into. I'm pretty sure for the penalty, the ball, the ball comes in at him. He's for some reason on the edge of the box on the left-hand side and he quickly, just in, instinctively, does a pass-through ball to, to Gakpo and, you know, Gakpo's alert to it. He wins us the penalty. But even that, it's not always a spectacular half-volley passes, switch of play. It's the tight control where... A ball can be fizzed in on him and he's that good. He's already picked this pass before it's came to him. And I'm worried that, you know, if you do take him out of it, like several years ago, I was more worried if we were missing Trent than I was if we were missing any of our front three because he always seemed like the one who'd create everything for us. Everything seemed to go through him. I understand why that's still the case because he's phenomenal. I don't know, maybe you go back to a 4-3-3 if he gets injured. I'm really not too sure. I think Thiago's got the same, like, he's unbelievable at passing. Mm. He doesn't do the same role as Trent. Trent's far more advanced. You know, Thiago keeps the ball moving, very good at recycling it. Um, so, yeah, I am I am slightly worried about that, but I'm, I'm hoping that he doesn't get injured because he's been absolutely insane. If you're going to build your team around a player, build it around a 24-year-old well, who actually yeah. doesn't have a particular, has a really strong injury record so be. far. And look, again, we can have this, you can drive ourselves mad, and I know because we've had loads of injury problems with on, with players, uh, and even going back beyond Jürgen, you know, we had it with Fernando Torres, even with Steven Gerrard at, mm-hmm. at times, but, like, there's no backup plan for not having Kevin De Bruyne really I mean you know you can put Foden in and you can put but no one really genuinely is a is a is, a, is yeah. an understudy for that and again what do you do what what did City do they went and bought Erling Haaland but they buy Alvarez in the same summer because yeah you're not going to buy another Erling Haaland but actually you buy something else and, and it allows you to do something yeah. slightly different mm-hmm. I think Bichetta can cover a bit of that and what you're hoping is that maybe that if you've got Thiago Thiago can do some of your more creative stuff Elliot might be able to do it if you've got goals in the team, I think it covers a lot of a multitude of sins. If you've got Luis Diaz, Gakpo, Salah, uh, I don't. No. I've not seen enough of him to play that he plays like that. If I'm honest, no. um, he's got the passing range. Has he I for think that. technically he's quite good. I'm, yeah, I'm just I don't know, like I say, you are right. If you're going to build your team around anyone, build around one of the a world class player, which he's definitely. Like I say, I went back to performance. I loved his reaction to the assist. Was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, like, I am the man. Like, it was awesome. I actually think Pachetic yeah. is the shout. Now but I'm thinking yeah. more and more about it. From the little we've seen of him, and he's only a very small sample size, I know. But just from the way he carries himself more than anything, I'm thinking the way he goes about his business just suggests that he does have that technical range to maybe do that role. It levels yeah. off Trent right now, but as a backup goes, he's not the worst. Also, if you think back to when Trent first got into the team, he was this very skinny lad. And Stefan Bajetic, he's got, he's, you know, he's very skinny, but he can hold his own. He's a six and now, as well, which I'm... Exactly, but now look at Trent. Trent, you wouldn't want to meet him down an alley anywhere. <laughs> He'd knock you out. <laughs> so maybe if, if, you know, Stefan as well gets a bit more weight on him, um, maybe he can, you know, build into and that. He needs to be thick, two Cs. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, right, if you want more on the Liverpool Tottenham game, then why Sounds. wouldn't you? Uh, check out the Final Word show exclusively on redmenplus.com. Or uh, if you are a cult hero or a Wonder, Wonder Kid, Kid. subscribe member on YouTube, uh, that show's available for you as well. Uh, so yeah, do check it out. You host that one? Mm-hmm. Was it good? It was. I had Sam Walker and Alex from Cop TV. Nice. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. We, had, you... we had a big old laugh over Charles Smiley. There was a good, <laughs> there was a strong 15 at the end of just, yeah. just laughing at that clown. So, yeah. If you do want to see them do the pigeon dance That's as well, it, yeah. uh, do I over there and watch it? I didn't do the dance. It was the other two, but it's fine, do it now. I, I shushed. That's fine. We've all took the piss either way. Okay, it's fine. Uh, yeah, more of that. Anyway, right, it was a very short break from us. Then we're doing agony dance, uh, and we're going to be previewing the Fulham game as well. Hey, stop what you're doing right now. Prepare yourself, prepare your family, prepare your kids, prepare your babysitters. Because on Friday the 5th of May, we are having a quiz night, party night at Hotel Anfield. And the tickets are available right now, but your time to get them is running very, very short. If you like Liverpool trivia, if you like Liverpool songs, if you like just laughter and happiness in your life, then come down to Hotel Anfield on Friday the 5th of May. The tickets are available right now on Ticket Quarter. The link will be there or thereabouts. Get involved, get your tickets bought uh, and come and party with us. It's going to be Liverpool trivia. It's going to be Liverpool games, Liverpool challenges. It's going to be amazing prizes on offer. And Dave Jags from the Ragamuffins is going to be playing live music as well. Uh, so come and join me 
Chris Pajak for the biggest party night in advance of the Liverpool Brentford game. And yeah, maybe win yourself some boss prizes, have a good time, and put some smiles back on some red faces. Hey, it's the Bias Football Podcast. Good and respect of the week. I mean, I don't know the scoreline, but if we could play the video of the time wasting, please, in the Crystal Palace game, uh, it, it was four or five one, wasn't it? What game is this? I don't know. That well, looks like the player in Wofford. Okay, well, that, that, that time wasting in that game from years ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're we're doing it again. We're doing it again. Get out, you are the the worst again. at this game you, know what you are the worst you know edited five weeks ago I, all right let me let me let me do it again right so we'll just go to me we're not going to cut this out i said at the start of the last one that i didn't know the scoreline in the game i will rephrase that too i don't know the game what game this was from but is it not i saw so it's Wofford. i saw i saw that. some time wasting which was fantastic i've got no idea right you're bad for this <laughs> game dan yeah, Jeff Hurst for his hat trick in the 1966 quarter <laughs> final against West Ham. Absolutely. What a performance. Oh. Yes, come and check out the Bias Football podcast. There will be streaming it live at Redman Plus shortly after. We finish here. Uh, you can get that after the fact in podcast form as well. We're going to have a little bit of a chat about the relegation battle once again, of course, and why Man City have just slipped into boring, boring, going to win the title mode. Um, agony rant time. Has anyone got anything they want to get off their chest? Once again, referees being and like not even who's the bald absolute. Idiot who's on Sky Sports who just doesn't have a clue as well. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Dermot Gallagher. He turned around the other day, he turned around today and said that the challenge from Skip on Luis Diaz is never, ever a red card. Ever a red card. And I just don't understand how you've got him at the top who's overseeing all this and giving his opinions. No wonder referees are getting everything wrong. Well, because Howard that's Webb the standard. The, well, this is the problem. It's actually not even him. It's Howard Webb who's but told... But he's constantly on But he's told referees it. like to allow more physical stuff to go. So what's happened now is football's gotten more dangerous because they're trying to create this like idea of being a bit more rough and tumble. Mm. I... The one that always comes back to me on that was Gary Mack being sent off against Arsenal and he slides in and his feet roll yeah. over the ball and then he makes contact. And I cause and I was watching all the analysis of the the, po- the post match on Sky and they were like, Well he gets a bit of the ball first, it's like I know, but it's it's like yeah, mid it's ankle. like mid shin. Right. Samira got sent off this year for going over the top of the ball and he got the ball first and went into someone's shin. He got done for that. But I actually think Skip is just lucky to get the ball because Diaz mm. almost flicks it into him. Yeah. It's not like he wins the ball. He just fortunately gets a touch mm. and then yeah. collides into Diaz's shin. It's a ludicrous challenge. When both managers, both sets of players, all the fans think you were crap, you're probably crap. Tierney was rubbish. Yeah. He should have sent Skip off, he should have sent Jota yeah. off. Yeah. There was low, it was the whole thing. He let too much go. It was it become a little bit niggly at times. Some decisions that he was given, and then the same thing that happened. Yeah. He wouldn't give it the one on Salah just before their goal. Mm. Just the never line fouled. he doesn't give. It's just it was a bizarre performance, and Jürgen is going to get in trouble. And I get it because you can't go and dance in the fellas' face. I, I love and, it. And, but like you can understand. And Ryan Mason was saying by the way, he wasn't exactly quiet on the touchline himself. He was furious. It was a very poorly official game. It's, he's, mm. he's a He's a bad ref. He just is. And we keep getting him all the time. Like I think a quarter of our league games this season have had him in them. It's, it's mm. mad. Oh, I saw that. So that was a uh, 21% of our games yeah. and just 25% stu- of his. Klopp's going to get in trouble stu- for stu- that and what he said afterwards, isn't he? And then honest. he accused yeah. him of saying stuff. And, then they, and, they, and yeah, he also basically, he doubled down on his, he's only got a problem with us. Like, which is right. I'm not questioning that for a single second. He's absolutely spot on because Tierney quite clearly has a major issue with us. But Klopp went again with that, basically saying he, he always has this problem every time he officiates us. He gets bad decisions. Can I just say it? Because everyone is universally in agreement that Jota should have been sent yeah. off yeah. apart from me. Because I just, I, I, I apparently had this thing. And it, again, depends on, it will depend on circumstances. And I think those are the ones where 
and I'm glad I'm glad he gets a yellow card because I think I, I, there's a degree of common sense about like the, the the pace of play and the things that happen in real mm. time. I'm not suggesting we should we should go around with boots up and all that, but I often have this thing where it's called foot, it's called football, and you know your your natural instinct is to go with the ball with your foot. If someone ducks their head down yeah. and, to, and tries to head things. For me, that's always like part and parcel of the game. It's like it goes back to the man ahead of someone. Mm-hmm. In reality, if you walked up to someone and that and, and that actions led to you kicking them in the face, then that's 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 bang on. But also, if someone runs into the middle of the pitch, it's like know. it's like it's like that the famous Dennis Bear. I think is it, if I tell you, is it the Henri statue? I think it is. Or is it the, the Bear Camp one where he's jump? It's like him jumping and doing that. If another fella run in and try to. Try to head the ball at that time. Mm. Bearcam kicks his head clean off, gets sent off, and then they never make a statue at that moment. Mm. I don't know. I, 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 they're the ones that annoy me because I don't think I think there's there's quite an endangering opponents. Mm. I think there's I think Skip's one is far more reckless. It's far more there's far more force behind it. Yeah. Jotters, it's like he's going to nick it. It's not like he's going. He doesn't like you know what I mean. Like engage in a in a stamping motion and all that kind of stuff. The whole thing's fucked, is what I'm basically saying. As I would I I would suggest that the skip one's more violent than the than the Robertson, the but the Robertson one looks weird. A career ending thing that can snap his ankle right off. That like it's just a horrific challenge. Mm. Wasn't given a foul. VAR never looked at it. Like it's just it's uh, no wonder Luis Diaz. At first I thought it was knee, and I thought, yeah. oh my god, not this again, mm. not again. And no wonder he was screaming and pain. It's a horror tackle. Yeah. The force that he's came down with. It's all his studs. And I do think Diego Jota should have been sent off. I, 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 at the moment that it happened, I didn't even know really what had happened. Um, my head was a bit frazzled with how the game had got. Um, and looking back, it's 100% a red card. But even fouls in the games, the Salah one, Lino was two yards mm. away and has not gave it. So why are you in the middle of yeah. the park giving it? Why are you making Terrible. that decision? And if anything, it's Salah being bragged. The reason Salah's arm even hits Davies is because he's got a shirt. Mm. It's just, it's ludicrous officiating and it's always going to be like that. I don't blame Jürgen Klopp for fuming. I don't blame Ryan Mason for fuming. I don't blame the sets of fans. It's got to get better because it, it very much is a game that you know three nil up and a red card well it doesn't go back to three three i can tell you that much yeah. but three three and a red card to jota he doesn't score the winner mm. it, it's officiating taking over the game the thing is though steve's right and steve sort of just says how it is in terms of porting he's just being a bad referee and yeah. that's that's what it is because i think the standard of officiating in this country is pretty dire and i've said it it's a few funny. times to be honest and the Premier League hailed itself as the best league in the world, and rightfully so. It's meant to be sort of the cream of the crop, the best product there is going. And that yesterday, as much as there wasn't loads riding on it, it's like it's not like a Champions League final like it has been in the past, or mm-hmm. even maybe a top four decider. But it is still a high-profile football match, and Paul Tierney's taken charge of it. He's abysmal. Yeah. We've seen it time and time again. In this particular fixture, like we had the Harry Kane thing last time, then he sent Robertson off, doesn't he? He's he's the worst of a very bad bunch. Has Michael guy, Oliver so. slipped down the pecking order or something? Or do we are we just not in big enough games well, anymore? Than... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. He, he was doing a board, was wasn't he? Was he? Of, he was in Saudi like, Arabia. He was the Cristiano Ronaldo game yeah, in Saudi Arabia the recently. the Ronaldo yeah. game. But also, there was a photo oh. that went, I mean, and if I've got it wrong, people can tell me. There was a photo knocking around on Twitter of Paul Tierney in in the United and that old Trafford as Steven Gerrard kisses the badge and pr- is that's that fake? I think he's a lookalike to be God, honest okay, great. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, a, he's, he's from Paul Wigan. Nearly. That's what I think how he can get Yeah, him. but Wigan he's not he's not supporting like it's like well, loads of people I mean, in I think the, the main idea support. of a bit like there's some things that are conspiracy theories and whatever but ultimately we don't need a conspiracy theory for Paul he's, he's just it's crap they're all bad they are but yeah we can't solve that all in one hit the problem with you right though is that maybe that's where we go wrong is that in, in myopically focused on individual referees because every club's got their referee they hate the most. Mm. We've actually got more than one, which can't probably we tells like Mark Clattenberg if Everton just managed not to be ref by him. Remember that we're way? close with that with Tierney. We've we, got we, to be. But we're not with the opposite. He keeps referencing. No, but I'm saying now we have to be <laughs> on the like we have to be on the brink. Because the, Everton just kicked off that much about Mark Clattenberg after he didn't um, give a penalty against Jamie Carragher. Did he never have him again? Can't we, there must be a way where we can just do something to stop having this fight. Yeah, if you've got like a get out of jail, get out of ref for yeah. cards, you, you slap it down be, on the yeah, table. There should be something like, because he's diabolical, he's so bad and he's arrogant. The way he walked yeah. over to the Ian Cobb to book him was like, look out on me, I'm Paul Tain. He's like, fuck off. Mm. You're both from Wigan. The, the other thing is, 
is the PG MOL came out and said, oh, the, you know, what he what he said was actually really professional to Jürgen Klopp. Yeah. Release it then. Mm-hmm. If it was so professional, let us all know. What These need to be mic'd up because it's like against Spurs years ago where who was the fat one that didn't know what he was doing? John Moss. John Moss. Who was the fat one? I don't remember John... that game. That's just true. That's the blanket, <laughs> blanket <laughs> statement. <laughs> who was the fat that, one? That, that's just me in this office every day. <laughs> John <laughs> Moss. <laughs> John Moss gave a penalty for Spurs yeah, he um, because he didn't. Yeah. He didn't know, he so he just gave he? it. Yeah, yeah. He was like, "I'm not too sure, so I'm just going to give it." Yeah. We need people mic'd up so they can be held accountable yeah. for what they've done. Uh, Matt Carney sends a super chat and says, "What would you prefer? Aggressive, dominant play?" Players that are prone to bookings or mild mannered players that are less imposing but see fewer bookings. No bookings all the time. Yeah, yeah. Take, take the all yellows, man. Is it? The, 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 the lad from Sporting who we were linked to the other day. Ugarty. Oh, he loves a yellow. Yeah, he does like a yellow, yeah. yeah. Get him uh, old yellow. I was so excited when Nabi Keita came in and off the back of like four red cards yeah. in our season. I was like, go on. Turned out he's a different he's footballer gonna, altogether. Yeah, I don't know who, who, yeah, who, who, who that was. He just couldn't be arsed playing footy games <laughs> because he knew he was leaving. Like when you know you get, you, you know, you're running your contract down at work. I remember having my last day at Comet. That shows my age, but uh, being That's said, you get to be a let go. You, and I was tossing around, you went like, you can just get off now if you want and not get paid for it, or you can actually do your job at the end. I was like, that's fine. Work, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but a little bit more, a little bit more. But yeah, fun, yeah, funny around because why not? Um, the uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. To, to the question on Matt, I think we all like people who play on the edge, but I also don't think you can have. I think that I think that again, the, the thing is you've got to be rules around it. Hasn't there? Because that's that's how you think you can have. I think that again, there's, there's got to be rules around it, hasn't there? Because that's. That's why you end up with a world where people think they can get away with so it. Goes back to that. Sorry, as an aside, that offside rule again makes I think I think gives sorry. Spurs so much room for encouragement the other day because they get two. It's two decent opportunities in that game that are both offside. Mm-hmm. The flag should just go up immediately because the guy knows it's because sh- he flags the second it breaks down. Yeah. And I know this is, this goes back to the VAR thing of almost like they're trying to let play go, hoping the VAR will be the safety net that protects them all. But what it does is it makes Tottenham feel like they're better, they're more in the game. It ups, it and it makes it feel like Liverpool are on the ropes more than they are. It, it unsettles the fan base and blah blah. Do you think Ryan Mason oh, didn't see the flag go up and just assume they were good chances? Oh, and that's yeah, why he thought they were a better team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post like five times. And you yeah. see him... But what he's failed to say is that someone needs to tell Ryan Mason that hitting the post is off target. Yeah. And because I, I heard it say, I heard the comments even say. Liverpool like um, protected once again by the saved by the post. Mm-hmm. You're not That's saved right. by the post. You say the striker is saved from looking stupid like he's missed the target because he's hit the post. It makes you feel like you've had more than than, than you have. Mm-hmm. It's a statistical fact that hitting the post does not count as a shot on have target. You, fact. Have you seen the um, the video of Klopp and I think Son in the first half? It's the it's the post. And it, he's like 10 yards offside. Mm. And eventually it gets brought back after everyone sprinted back and he's at the post. And Jürgen literally points at the line and then just has his head in his hands. Yeah. Like, yeah. you just can't you believe what's what, happening. What, what made Jürgen on the floor? The floor and yeah, yeah. Right was it the Salah foul? Was it the Salah foul? Yeah, 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 yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, nobody, <laughs> there's nobody angrier in the world than Virgil van Dijk when the flag doesn't go up either. He is. But yeah. he's had yeah. to sprint. Oh, mate, he's fuming with them. He's the kind of man who's got, like, worked out how many sprints he's got left in his career <laughs> Wasted and having there. to use a couple up like yeah yeah, yeah definitely uh, right okay listen um, let's move things on let's do the match preview Liverpool versus Fulham uh, it is still me uh, stay Chloe and Dan for this one um, I'm kind of still in the, the aftermath after the glow of Tottenham Hotspur I don't really want to think about Fulham but here we are stay at, at least it's another home game you know we're in this little three on the bounce run here it is does it for no, I mean, we go to Leicester, don't we, on the Monday or where? Oh, sorry, I'm thinking four wins on the bounce. My head's gone. Oh, sorry, no. I was just really I'm happy still about thinking the about Charles and the little <laughs> pigeon idiot. Um, the <laughs> yeah, we're in the middle of this little sort of home trilogy, as it were. It does look because of the result of the weekend, like top four is going to be going to be sewn up, Steve. But what we've got now, you know, changing of expectations. We've got to start Smith and fifth, and it's interesting to see Fulham, who are very much a team in and around us, have had a real drop off uh, the last couple of months, whereas we've managed to turn the corner. This can't afford to be a stumbling block. There has to be the renewed purpose of we said this. It is disappointing not playing Champions League football. It isn't dead and buried, but also we need to start being excited for what comes next. This is another more, another interesting test of mentality for Liverpool. Yeah, and like you say, all Liverpool get to seventy one points and see what it takes. Yeah, they might they might be enough. It might. It's, Looks like it probably isn't going to be enough. You'd be shocked if, if 
Man United or Newcastle slip up that many times, but put it on them. Just make them have mm-hmm. to do it. Anyway, you're right. Um, it, the season started away at Fulham, and it was very early on in that game when me and you sat there like, oh my god, like, <laughs> it feels a long time ago now. Um, and we were right to be worried. It turned out from what we saw in that game. So Fulham gave Man City a good game the other day. You know, the, the, it was a it was a whirly. That was the difference between them, really, wasn't mm. it? So they're they're a good they're a good team. They'll be organised and all that kind of stuff. We are at home. We we we'll be expected to do it. But I I don't think this is going to be an easy game. You know, I I wouldn't just be banking. I hope I'm wrong. I hope they just do roll over. And they have had a little bit of a dip, but they're still fundamentally they've got players that can hear. Yeah, they're defensively sound. They, they know what they're doing. They're very well organised. Like it turns out, maybe Marco Silva what is a good manager. It might just, it might just be Everton again. The case sure. of, of that <laughs> particular football club, you know, it just leaves an absolute stink on you. But I think it's going to be a tough game. I think it's going to be a, a quite close one as well, quite nervy. Obviously, the Mitrovic thing's done them in big time mm-hmm. matches. That FA Cup game against yeah. Man United, not yeah. only did it, and it ended their season because they might have they might have had half a chance of winning that competition, but mm-hmm. perhaps and <laughs> lost their best player for eight games for, for touching a ref. So mm-hmm. it's all it has got a bit pear for them, but. You're right. You're right in what you're saying. You've just got to go and put it put it on Man United and Newcastle's toes at some point by beating them. And also, there's this thing, Chloe, where Brighton are the real X factor, the unknowns in this European race. We are four points ahead at the moment, but they have got two games in in hand. Um, today, over actually, you know, Tottenham and Villa ahead of them as well. They're in scintillating form again out of nowhere look like they've totally fallen apart and then they're going battle walls at the weekend Liverpool gets the point it's like don't even need to worry about looking up the table or looking down the table it's about looking too much almost of the opponents in front of us keep our blinkers on focus entirely on Fulham and get the job done and again the mission is win every game as Steve kind of says the mission is make sure we we bounce out the season with some positive vibes Want to go to Anfield in, in midweek, and I want to I want to see more of what I've seen, maybe slightly less goals conceded, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, more of the more of the similar same. Yeah, hopefully you know it should have a good atmosphere on Wednesday. I thought the atmosphere at Anfield the other day was quite poor, to be perfectly honest. Um, and a four three win that should really get everyone up. We've got two more home games on the bounce. Get six points out of them, and just see where you're on the table. Take it game by game. Fulham, surprisingly, you know, even without Mitrovic, haven't been horrific. They beat the Ev. That was boss. Um, I think it was Harry Wilson with that with a goal yeah, there. Yeah. Um, and they've they've got players who can who can hurt us, but they are without Mitrovic. And I saw a clip on Twitter of uh, Pereira. Uh, he, he landed and it looked quite bad. I don't know whether he... But if he is not playing, that's a big boost for Liverpool. But we just need to focus on ourselves. If we can find Trent the gaps and the spaces and we can execute the way we, we, we want to, um, then we we can really batter Fulham. You can. You've just got to be careful what comes you the way in terms of counter-attacks. You've got to stay concentrated. We got complacent in that first half, which is what caused them to get their goal, but them to also have one cleared off the line. Um, And, you know, Kulosevsky also had a one-on-one later on from Robertson where he didn't put it away. We need to make sure that we don't get complacent. We need to stay focused and concentrated because the more you give these the the opposition these little moments, the more they can hang on them and at half-time they can point them out and say do this because you can do it once again um so yeah we need to focus on ourselves put in a solid performance hopefully don't concede as many um i'm really feared off the 4-3 win in the last minute because that gives you a lot of confidence the goals are back but we're still giving we're still giving far too much encouragement that's the thing forest get two tottenham get three we give one away to west ham our goals are back don't get me wrong we've you know fours and threes and twos teams feed off that as well don't yeah yeah. and it it it, it, it's almost feel a little bit like the the jagan's very start you know the yeah yeah. well i well i was making the 17 18 comparisons earlier on that's what it feels like it feels like a team that's got enough goals to go and blitz their yeah. opponents and we've got options to do that. I mean, you think about the start of that 17-18 season, we had Coutinho in the mix in the first mm-hmm. half as well. So we had, a, 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 people remember Coutinho mm-hmm. as a midfielder. He, he rarely did Play that. Left wing one. We yeah. played exactly, we had him in Mane in, in a bit more rotation in, in, in that and so we had the options to go and really hurt teams and now we've got that and that's, and that's what this running is going to be based on, I think, mm. is that there's clear issues that still need addressing yeah. um, in the squad just in terms of bodies the transfer market but i said this in the summer we spent the money 
rebooting the attack mm. and now we've actually got that attack available to us it's that's what its job is you know that's where all the fresh all the fresh all the versus all the vigor is in this side mm. and that's the kind of the beauty about what we saw at the weekend the real strong takeaway going into fulham is i don't know who our starting three are going to be i could make a strong case for two for two options mm -hmm. and it could yet be another one on top of that you've got a lot of lads who are actually in really really good form and that should be enough because let's be honest i know spares are a mess but the same way that west ham were a better team than leeds but we still managed to do them away from home mm -hmm. Fulham are a worse team than Tottenham Hotspur. We should be able to have enough. They are. They definitely are, especially without Mitrovic. He, we spoke about him quite a bit already because he was the X factor for them all season. He was a lot of the reason as to why they were overachieving so much. And since he's been out of the side, they have taken a little bit of a dip. The, you'd say they're on the beach, but then the performance against City suggests they are still fighting. But listen, I think Liverpool need to take care of business. Now, that's where we're at in terms of our season between now and the end. And I think... On the attacking point, you're right. We've kind of, we've got our attack sorted. Like, there's them lads. They're going to be the lads next season as well. The midfield, we're not so sure about. There's sort of little buds of um, hope in there with the youngsters coming through. Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, Pachetic as well. And the defence might need addressing too. But yeah, I think we're going to see... It'd be nice if we could keep it tighter at the back and not offer opposition more encouragement, but I think we are going to see maybe more games like we've seen yesterday. It's going to sort of be the Norwiches of years gone by and Bournemouth games that were just chaos yeah. because that's where we're at. And I think we're still trying to find our way in this new system with the personnel we have available. But yeah, I think, like Chloe says, you know these little run of games at Anfield, if the players were starting to tire at all yesterday in this little run. There's nothing like a 94th minute winner in front of the cop as a little shot in the arm is there to go again yeah. between now and the end of the season. Let's talk about some of the options then. Clo, um first off, Hendo, Elliot, Hendo back in. Yeah, I, pr I probably would. Um, just from the off, you know, if, if we need something, something more. Henderson, um, I think he defensively does a little bit better in that role. He gives license and he's obviously right footed, which really helps Mo Salah out. He digs balls in mm -hmm. um, from the right hand side when he overlaps. I'd bring him back in. I don't think Harvey Elliott played horrific. Mm -hmm. He just got a little bit lost in the game, that's all. And he'll get a ch his chance again. Jordan Anderson's, you know, getting on now. Um, so I'd slot him back in. Um, I'd ask Curtis Jones to go again. I really would. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jota deserves to come back in and Gakpo deserves to start. So that means that my front three is Salah, Gakpo, and, and Jota. I think the Jota thing is that that's that's going to be the real hard one because I can I can see how Jordan Henderson does just come back in. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong because it's Fulham. If I'm being honest, and we're at home, I would probably give Elliot another go and see if he can see what he can do. Because again, we know what Jordan Henderson can do. We know what he's bringing to the table. Another game, another 45, 60 minutes, whatever, won't do Harvey Elliott's development any harm. But the actual real difficult one today is that Diaz Jota because yeah. I thought Diaz was absolutely Boss. sensational. You know, he's 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 told he's everything our sides lacked since he's been out of the team. But Diego Jota is also something that we you know he's a, he's a, he is a, a predatory clinical finisher. Mm -hmm. That Jürgen's gonna have to have to rack his brain a bit this week. Yeah, he's got to get out of jail for Ricardo. You can just say to Diaz. We're, just, we're taking it slow with you. You, yeah. mean, you, you, you can mm. start the weekend with Brentford and we'll take it in terms. We don't want to rush you back. That's his guard if he can't on that one if he wants to, if he needs it. Because you're right, there's four forwards there who are all more than deserving to, to play. Um, I go back to the Henderson Elliott thing. I, I'd go Elliott again. I, I don't think Henderson's been that good. If truth be told, I don't think he's played well for a few weeks. I think he hasn't. I get it. It's been our graft over there, but I don't think he's even been, been particularly great at it. So. I wouldn't mind giving Harvey an, another go at it, but I expect he'll go back to Henderson again. Harvey to go, he hasn't, he hasn't played, and he looked knackered the other day when he went off earlier. Yeah. They both looked tired. I, I, think, I thought at the time they were both the right trubs because Diaz and, and Harvey looked like they were, they were starting to flag a little bit. He's got an interesting one at left back. Mm -hmm. Does he trust Costas? Does he want to give Robertson another go? Because if, you, if, you, if you're basing it on last performances, Robertson couldn't have any qualms about being dropped. It's just whether you think Costas has got it in him to, do, to be that. The more left of a three rather than a left back. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. Really, it's it's a, it's enough of a turnaround. You think Sunday to Wednesday night that it's not horrendous, but I, he's also got Brentford to think about. I wonder mm. if he, again, I, I don't know how far it yeah, you're thinking it might literally just be next game, next game, and we'll see what we've got. But there are, I'd definitely be keeping Salah and Gakpo together. So you're right. I, if it was me, I think. I, 
I've, I've said it all along. Gap, where Jota gets in my team, and I figure I, I always figure it out. But you are right, Luis Diaz look really, really keen yeah. for it. But yeah. like I say, the fact that he got a whack, the fact that he went off, mm. and the fact that he's just coming back, it almost yeah, yeah you, can, you, you can you can rest them without dropping them. You can yes. say hey, we're looking yeah. after you. It's an easier, where, you know what I mean? It's, it's an yeah. e- it's an easier conversation to have because this time made it, it start of next season. If everyone's fit and available and fired, and there's two lads not playing, who are going to be mm. who are going to be gutted? So. That's what you, it's where you want to be, but it's, yeah. it, there are hard decisions. The midweek need. thing helps in that, doesn't it? Dan? Yeah, because 100%. it means you get to say, as they're saying there, usually going to be start. You're getting sixty to sixty between sixty and eighty in this game, yeah. and then you're the ones getting a sub. And then we might look to, we'll look to flip mm-hmm. it at the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a massive help. It actually takes a lot of pressure off Klopp in terms of having them conversations and making those decisions. It's almost you'd imagine a lot. Of, it'll be dictated to a lot of it in terms of the fitness side of things from those people. But yeah, I I would personally like to see Harvey Elliott go again. I'd like to see him get the hour and then Henderson the half an hour with a view to maybe Henderson coming in for the Brentford game from the start. Um, I think Diaz should come out of the side, not based on his performance, but based on sort of that easing him back in. I think we still need to ease him back in yeah. and be very careful with what we're getting from him between now and the end. Um, and also Jota, listen, comes in, gets the winner. Like, go again, my yeah. mate, go again and build also, on it. Do you think that, like, this, you know, this conversation where people are saying, I'd rather not be in your, but you're not going to be in the Champions stupid League. conversation, by the way. It is. It's stupid. <laughs> this is the point now, is that you, you give it will you, Liverpool don't want you to be playing 38 games next season. You, no. you can't have a big squad mm-hmm. if you're playing 38, 40 games. You we can't, we can't do a lot of the things yeah. we want to do if we don't, but if we don't have that many games and the finance. But I'm just thinking, like, yeah. th- this is where if you do get your open league, make, make, most of them might not have to kick a ball in the group, they just don't worry about it. Yeah, but you can, there, there are ways that rotation. That, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it also yeah. means that when someone comes into the side because of a knock or an injury, someone's ready and going. So mm-hmm. it's easier to just say, you know, for example, Jota got a whack against. Against West Ham, so there's Luis Diaz. He's, yeah. Luis Diaz is on, and he's played a few games, and he's had minutes under his belt. Yeah. You can't week. just go from not playing every, to, and then you're just in. No. That's how you end up like with with players who are, who are take games to get. Off the at the pace, risk yeah. of being a, a Europa League apologist, um, there is a world where it changes the dynamic in a positive way for Liverpool. And I know everyone's focused on the money that it that revenues the Champions League brings and the, and the, the caliber of player, which I think is a little overstated in so much as. If Jürgen said it before, they actually don't want players who only want to be at us because we're at the top because that's the wrong. That's not a, the, mentality the mentality you want. You want people yeah. who want to be who are keen to get you push it on. There's a world where Cuevan Keller's the Europa League goalkeeper, so he sticks around for yeah. for another year for that. There's a world where all the lads who've played too much football, the older lads, you're right. It means you don't play Thiago, you don't play Henderson, you mm. don't play Virgil van Dijk, you know, and these, that, that, and you don't play Mo Salah. Simicast over Robin. It's exactly, yeah, and yeah. that gives you, all of a sudden, you get, you almost get an extra season at a higher level back out of these players, whereas the Champions League, you're not going to not play van Dijk and, and Salah in the Champions League games because they would demand that, that yeah. they're in there and that helps you then build for what comes afterwards, but also helps protect these lads so you do get better out of them in the mm. games that they play. So that's why this is a game, like you say, and it is, it is what we wanted, but, I do think it's quite important they finish fifth. Yeah. Um, and you're right, Tottenham and Villa losing obviously the weekend. Brighton are still hanging around. They've got a lot of games to catch up though. So we saw the other day had the effects that they had. when they had to go weekend midweek. And yeah. albeit they had played extra time, caveat, but like they didn't look great at it. You know what I mean? Because they're not they're not they're used to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. the pool at this the pool these a lot of these players are used to this now mm-hmm. going and going and going again at the business end. Yeah, it, we're chasing something different, but it's the. In terms of like the looking ahead to, to to the Fulham game in particular, the only other couple of questions I've got is, at, at what point does Fabinho not play? Is there any point where he is he just is he just in now until the end of the season? Is it Henderson for him? Is the question there? Or well, no, for that matter. I, I, think, I, I think I think again it was meant to be Thiago, and then that's kind of yeah. It'd be a bad And is, is Alexander Arnold Henderson. just in every game now? Probably. Probably yeah. yeah. Um, Don't have another option there, do we? Yeah. But for me, I think you are right in that, and no one's even said the name Darwin Nunes as well, which is a different story altogether. Mm-hmm. But just on the point about Europe, I think I certainly want to finish fifth. And if anyone's in any doubt whether we want to finish fifth as a collective, just look at Jurgen Klopp and Anfield's reaction to what happened yesterday. Yeah. Like, it's got to be. It just yeah. has to be fifth. Abs- absolutely. Yeah. Just on the henderson Elliot thing, I was just having a quick look because I, I knew this again from the video I did last week about the minutes played. henderson Elliot are running at about the same total minutes on the season. Uh, it's fractionally more. It's like 30, less than 27, I think, 23 more for Jordan Henderson so far. They're in, they've been in rotation kind of all, all season long. So you, you can go 
one or the other, really. I don't think it really yeah, mm-hmm. it really matters too much. There might be a stylistic issue, but that's what you've got your substitutes bench for. Yeah. But the thing, sorry, the thing that Elliot's got going for him, um, Henderson's got three assists this season. Elliot's got five goals and two assists. You get a little bit more in the Champions League and Cups, of course. But that's what you. That's what you. We know you're getting with Harvey. Is you're getting more attacking input. And what I want to see from this running now mm. is that if we can't be trusted to keep the door shut, we need to go and blitz some teams. And I think Elliot could be a key. Component. I also about. think, mate, again, I don't know how far Jürgen looks, but if he's if he's looking at the next two games and picking one for each, mm-hmm. I mean, Brentford are, I mean, we saw the dangers they caused off yeah. set plays and stuff like, mm-hmm. if he's thinking, I, you know, heighten the team, if, 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 maybe yeah. Henderson plays there because Harvey's only a little, a little, little bless him. Uh, so maybe it's, it's we've got a nine day break course. after Brentford as well, haven't we? There's nine days there, yeah, because the Monday night, yeah, so there's a yeah. good gap if, in terms of fitness wise. I'm thinking if there are question marks, we do have a nice little break afterwards, yeah. I don't I don't mind whether Harvey Elliott starts or not, I'd be happy to see him again. I just thought Henderson because Henderson got a rest, he got yeah. he, he oh, didn't yeah. come on to late. And Diaz, I'd love to see Diaz, but the, I was so shocked to see him start from the, the beginning. Mm-hmm. He had two nine minutes and a 35, I did not think he was going to start from the off I assumed that the knock that Jürgen Klopp mentioned in his press about Jota was quite a big knock it, it must have been a, a, a bit, exactly so that is why I assumed Do, uh, um, not Darwin Nunes Lewis Diaz started which is why I the contempt no, you just it's said just, yeah, he's not he's not he's, he's, he's on your good list is he I think Jota's uh, back we're still struggling win, win a couple of headers and I might <laughs> I might turn it round a little he bit he scored the header this season no, he, did you not? He came on and look, I love him. I think he'll be boss. Uh, he's not yet fit into the system, not but he did not win a single header that was put up to him when you needed him to. And it was, he just out jumped people, but didn't really win. I feel like you've not let this go. You've had um, like some no, time to, 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 to <laughs> chill on this. It. But uh, if well, Diaz starts, I'd be really excited. Okay, sounds well good. Yeah, the good thing is, is, is we've actually got a few options. Yes, yeah, my dad. Unless you're in Fabinho. It wasn't that long ago when we were like, Jan Bento could do a job. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> but genuinely, but genuinely, we had to because that's what really it was. It's the first, it's like the warning signs of when your sides, things aren't going well and you start looking for wild solutions to it. Mm-hmm. It's like all the people going, like starting off Phillips centre half. And it's like fucking stupid. It's like, you I mean, there's a I reason. I didn't say starting that Phillips You were like, I'd, give, I'd be giving that Phillips Over Joe Gomez. Over exactly, Joe but Gomez. Joe Gomez was who, was who was available. Like, you know, so. There's just these things. I mean, everyone thinks them. There's got to be a radical answer. Like bring some mad player in from the cold. You bring them in when you've literally got no one else. Um, ben Doak will have his time, but you're right. That's 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 where we were at then. Where we're at now is we've actually got a bunch of senior lads who are all fit and hopefully pulling where's, in the right say, direction. Where's Bobby on this? Because he, he said he was going to miss three games, didn't he? Mm. That day the three now. So I wonder if is yeah. he? He should He's still be back out this week. Still out with injury. Yeah. So yeah, you wonder he didn't say anything. Back he needs bench, a good sign off, though, doesn't he? He can't just go out with a whimper mm. like this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, but it depends. What again? What What are we doing? What are we got? What are we going for? I think he can. I think he can contribute. Carvalho's the one that's the question in that because he's Carvalho got is sitting him for me. You know, he's off. On, he's off. He's off in the summer. Him Jürgen's comments the other day. That was enough. You know, we're going to we'll we'll talk about it in the summer. Kind yeah. of almost like is that what he said. He said we haven't spoke about. We it haven't yet, spoke so about it. Yeah, but speak yeah, about it now. Basically, we're talking yeah. about one loan, isn't he? he? That might be him. He did also yeah. praise his his, you know, his level of training back, back on the bench. He's really good in training. Buy him. But we've talked about this though, haven't we? About like the lads who are playing, you know, we're given game time to the fit and available lads who've got uh, more to grow and more to improve upon. If Firmino is fit and comes straight back in for Carvalho, it's it's a little thing where yeah, it tells you that Firmino's still very much like the, uh, the guy, and, and rightly so, to be fair. Um, okay, score predictions on this one, Dan? Liverpool 3 0. 2 1. Three two. Wow. Hey, I can do without two set piece goals from Fulham. Harry Wilson haunting us. No, someone's going to kick it into the space where Trent isn't there, and they're going to just pull it across to someone to tap it. Yeah, right. very, very well. But uh, Trent will get another assist. Four one to Liverpool. But Harry Wilson will score a free kick because that's <laughs> fine. Fine. I'm fine with that. Like, <laughs> that's genuinely that's fine. That's Let Harry Wilson score a free kick. Is there anyone we hate at Fulham? We'd like to get an equaliser, and then all... you can't hate anyone at Fulham, can you? Really? really. William? Pretty unhateable. No, I don't I really hate him. him that much. I actually rate him to be honest. Oh, he's a fucking Again, I can't hate everyone who scores against Liverpool. I have a long list of hate. I'd be yeah. a very hateful person. It's a good place to start, though. Mm. A little audition, <laughs> little audition for Paulinho as well. I, lo- I love Paulinho, you know. Mm. Okie dokie. Um, 
Right, sounds. Uh, we're going to wrap things up there. Do come and check out the Bias the Football podcast over on Redman Plus. Dot com always a very very good fun show where we basically look at the Premier League and football in general from a PR by Scouse Liverpool perspective. Um, oh, we're talking about Scouse. Oh yeah, Chloe's Get on, got then. the Scousest of webs uh, on at the moment. Not one ten. Sorry to disappoint to have you on, but on yeah. one lad, on on cloud, on, on cloud. Um, sounds. That is the podcast for this week. We'll be back with another one next. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're listening on podcast and service, give it a five star review. Drop a like on YouTube and have a boss week. Tally. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the show. Did you know that if you go over to redmenplus.com and sign up as a Club Legend subscriber, I will personally email you every single month with a new code, which gets you 20% off at redmenmerch.com. That's a no brainer. Go and do it. <laughs>